All right, hey, what is going on, guys? Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit more about conversion rate optimization tips and specifically how you can make your call to actions on your affiliate website the most effective that they can possibly be. All right, so what are we gonna to cover today? It's gonna to be a lot about A-B testing and why it's important, uh, how you can go about setting up a basic A-B test of your own. And as part of that, we're gonna go over where to place your affiliate links in order to have the most success and a couple of tips for how you can create urgency and FOMO in order to drive more sales and how you can actually do this on autopilot if you have a WordPress website. So why should you care about this stuff? Well. In the, a in the SEO world, A-B testing is a unicorn. It is easy, it's immediate, uh, and it's really, really cheap to get started. So something like this doesn't come along in the SEO world very often. So for that reason alone, it should absolutely be in your tool set. And the psychological principles that I'm gonna go over today, they affect everybody. They affect me, they affect you, and they're absolutely gonna affect an end user who doesn't even know, you know anything about marketing or copywriting or anything like that. And having good call to action best practices, it's gonna get you more sales without having to get more traffic. So let's say your SEO skills are a little bit rusty. Uh, these tips are gonna be good for that. Or if you just took you know, traffic loss from maybe an update or something and you're looking to just recover some sales without having to recover your rankings uh, for the most part. All right, so we're gonna go over A-B testing here with a real world example. So let's say you have a website that's getting around 20,000 visitors per month and you've got some average stats here. You've got a 5% click-through rate on your affiliate links with a 5% conversion rate of those clicks. So it's gonna get you a thousand clicks per month and about 50 sales. Um, so let's say you're making 30 bucks a sale, the monthly revenue of that site's gonna be around 1,500 bucks. And if you go to sell, it's gonna be worth around 45 grand, which is good, but it could always be better. So let's say we had a successful A-B test. We still have that same 20,000 visitors per month, but now we've upped our click-through rate on our affiliate links from 5% to 7%. Um, so instead of 1,000 clicks per month, we're now getting 1,400, and instead of 50 sales, we're getting 70. So we're keeping that same $30 per sale. Our monthly revenue is now $2,100, and we've increased the sale valuation from 45,000 to 63, which is an increase of $18,000. So that's pretty self-explanatory of the value behind this, especially since you can get started you know, with A-B testing for free. So it's really a no-brainer. All right, so what should you be testing? You can literally test anything, which is why I love doing this. Uh, but if you're just getting started, maybe you've never done this before, some of the basic things that you can test is your call to action placement, you know, what uh, button text might say, different colors, the layout and design of your website, and also the key areas of content. So the content leading up to your call to action, you can tweak what it says there to see how changing that affects sales. All right, so regardless of what tool you use, there are some best practices when running these tests. And the most important one is a single variable test everything. Because if you have three or four different variables going on in a single test, it doesn't matter if the result is positive or negative, it's impossible to tell what variable actually impacted change there. So if you wanna have good actionable data, make sure you're single variable testing everything. Now, if you test on your highest traffic pages, it's gonna get you the quickest results, but at the same time, uh, make sure that you run that same test on multiple pages so that you know, you're not getting some quirky result on one page that might not be relevant to, uh, to other pages. And if you wanna optimize your workflow here, test multiple ideas uh, before making changes across the board. So get three or four positive test results before you go making changes to your entire website. And just another thing to note here, if you have a tool that creates a new page, make sure that uh, that new page is either no follow, canonicalized, or both. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and dig into a real world example here. So this is what an affiliate you know, buyer's guide type of page might look like. You've got some products here, you get your call to actions, content, a chart, product summaries, pretty basic stuff. So let's say we want to test, uh, you know, maybe this this button is green, the whole website's green. Maybe we want to change its red. We have a suspicion that that might increase sales. We don't know until we test it. So let's go ahead and do a test here. All right. So the tool that I use is called Nelio. It's a WordPress plugin. Um, they didn't tell me to, you know, name drop their product. I've just used it before. It's inexpensive and it's really user friendly. So I like it. So what you're gonna do? Um, this is with a free version. So you can actually get your toes wet with A-B testing without you know, putting any money down. So we wanna run a test on a page here. All right, so what this tool does is it's gonna take all of the pages that are on your site and allow you to pick the one that you want, wanna run the test on. Uh, so you wanna button color to red. So this is what you're changing on the page, the name your test that. 
And you also want to set up a goal here. So for an affiliate website, nine times out of 10, this is going to be a click on your affiliate link. So um, you can do Amazon or something else, but uh, let's just use Amazon because everybody's at least familiar with that. Um, obviously, if you had different affiliate programs, you would make the goals that. So uh, if you want to track a conversion here, we are looking for a click to an external URL, uh, Amazon by default, it's going to include the URL that matches an expected value exactly. If you don't want to do this, because then you would have to create goals for every single affiliate link, and that's really cumbersome. So what you can do instead is uh, URL contains the expected value. So this is going to trigger a goal every time a URL contains the word Amazon that somebody clicks on. So if you're using another program, obviously put that there. And if you're using Amazon, make sure you also include the shortened link as well. Let's go ahead and save that. All right, so we're gonna edit the page. And what I really like about this tool is that it inherits your native page builder. So on this website, I'm using Thrive. Nelio is going to give me Thrive to work with when I am making changes to the site. And also what it does here is it automatically uh, de-indexes it. But if you want to be crazy like me, you can also put the OG URL here uh, so that it's canonicalized. So editing it in Thrive here. So again, we just want to change the button color here from green to blue, or sorry, green to red. So we're going to change it from forest green to core red. Beautiful. Make that change there. Do -do -do. Easy as pie, go ahead and save that. All right, so now you have your variant version here with the colors changed and you still have your original page uh, with the green buttons. So you wanna go ahead and save this as a draft because it doesn't actually publish the page until you start the test so you don't have you know extraneous pages lying around. So this guy is ready to go. So let's go ahead and start this. If this were a real test, you would let it run, get some traffic, and the tool is going to uh, analyze that traffic and let you know whether you know the variant's better or the original URL is better. So in this test, you're able to see the page views that each version has, the conversions based on your goals down here, the conversion rate, and with the free version, you don't get this, but with the paid version, you can also get a heat map. So instead of just saying, hey, this version is better, you're actually able to see where people are clicking, which is super, super cool for making informed decisions. Um, so that's how you would do that. So let's go ahead and pretend we have some clicks here and go ahead and stop the test. All right. So once you have your data if it's a bad result you can either reapply the original the original you know design or you can just from right here apply that variant design to the page that you ran the test on so it's one click uh super easy that's why i like this so you know it's worth trying if you've never tried it before just kind of see what happens so outside of just changing the button colors you can actually use psychology on a website to increase sales so the Principle that I'm gonna go over with you today is called the Gutenberg Principle. And essentially what this says is that people read in a Z pattern. So they're gonna be reading from left to right and then top to bottom. And you can capitalize on this by placing your call to action in places where people are naturally inclined to pause while they're reading. So places like that could be the right sidebar, the right side of a chart, top left and bottom right of content summaries and stuff like that. So this is an example of what a product summary might look like. You've got your eyeballs on the page here. Uh, they're going to start in the left and they're going to look right, back left again, and back right. So the best place to put your affiliate links in this case uh, is going to be the start, so the top left and the bottom right. So this is, you know, best case scenario. You can also place it in the top right here. People are going to pause a little bit there uh, to look at the image. Generally speaking though, you want to avoid putting your affiliate links to your call to action in the bottom left just because people kind of, you know, they scan over that section. So uh, link, link, and link. All right, so cruising along here, um, another psychological principle that you can take advantage of is freshness. So people like to know that they're getting the most up-to-date information. And now with that being said, you should still be updating your content on a regular basis, but there's some, you know, hacks that you can use uh, to make your content look more fresh than it actually is. So my favorite 
uh, version of this is changing the month and the year in the title tag. And you can use a plugin like Yoast or Rank Math. Uh, they have dynamic date insertion, so this just updates automatically for you. So you can do the same thing within content using a plugin called, I believe, Short Code for Current Date. Um, so in addition to having your title tag, say the month and the year, you can also, you know, maybe under your H1, have last updated the month, uh, January 2020, 2021, whatever it is. Uh, you can also, uh, if you have a sale that you know is continuous, instead of just saying this product's on sale, blah, 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 you can fill in today's date. So it says this product is on sale today, whatever the heck date it is. So it's going to make people think, you know, I need to jump on this sale right away. So on that note, FOMO activation. So people have this innate fear of missing out. And if you create a sense of urgency, you can activate FOMO in order to get more sales. So a couple ways you can do this is with evergreen countdown timers, highlighting missed opportunities, so past sales. So you can say something like this product was on sale last month for 30% off. This month it's 15% off. Next month the sale's going away. So people are going to understand that sales come and go and they're gonna wanna jump on the existing sale they have right now. So you can also highlight deals on exit intent and offer essentially people to get on your email list for exclusive deals that might not be available to everybody. And if you do this, just make sure you have an exclusive code that is specific to your site so that people, you know, they feel like they're actually getting a discount that is specific to your website. So key takeaways here, A-B testing is cheap, it's fast, and it's gonna increase your sales. So if you're not doing it, I highly, highly suggest giving it a try you're gonna you know, make more money with the same amount of traffic by doing that. And as part of that, uh, use these psychological tendencies that I talked about today to your advantage. So stuff like placing your call to action in areas where people are likely to pause and taking advantage of tools that are out there to you know, create urgency and FOMO, I'm kind of doing that on autopilot. Um, so that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, thanks for watching.